It's when the body is under times of, tr- uh, of extensive exercise or trauma, hypoxia. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about the brain and sleep deprivation. So whenever the body is more stressed or under more attack, that's when creatine seems to come to the rescue. And getting, getting, um, circling back to, you know, people that are supplementing with creatine mm-hmm. and it improves their training volume, improves their strength. Um, w- why do people have to supplement with creatine? Well, th- uh- they don't actually. So a, a little bit of clarity. So we naturally are producing creatine in, in two main areas, in the liver and in the brain. And on average, we're producing uh, about one to two grams. Then we're also consuming in the diet anywhere between one to three grams or none. So a vegan is not getting any dietary creatine. Uh, those that are on a carnivore diet might be all, all the way up to about three grams. And we excrete uh, through the urine uh, a product called creatinine in about two. So when you do the math, we're in a net surplus anywhere between one to two grams a day. And we know it's not essential because vegans can live a long, healthy, successful life. But we consider it conditionally essential because when we see all the evidence, I think there's over a thousand peer review papers, when we take in a little bit more, there is some substantial beneficial effects across the whole board, not just muscle. We're now looking at bone, brain and the immune system. Yeah. So from from a perspective of a vegan who is not getting a any almost amount of dietary creatine, right. they're relying on their liver to make it. Mm-hmm. Um what what's going on in their brain? You mentioned the brain mm-hmm. makes creatine. Yeah, it's very interesting. So on average, vegans have substantially less muscle creatine compared to an omnivore or carnivore diet. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So the thought is as we get older, we have re- reduced fossil creatine stores in our body, so they might need more. Um, and the hope is about 95% is, re- is housed in our, our skeletal muscle. But now with the emergence of research, the rest is in bone and, and brain specifically. So the hope is if we take in more, our muscles will be full, which is great. But now hopefully we're going to have some trickling into our bone, which is even just as important. And I think most people would argue from the neck up, that's really important from a global perspective with all the uh, neurological diseases, depression, anxiety. So I'm one of the big proponents of taking a lot more than probably what's recommended based on uh, the evidence-based research to sort of disperse throughout the whole body, not just skeletal muscle. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about that. So in some of these, let's, you know, the strength training, resistance training studies, what's the common dose Mm -hmm. that's taken? And maybe we can talk a little bit about, I mean, there's the loading phase, which I've never done. So I actually take five grams a day. And um, although I might start taking more after Mm -hmm. this podcast. So (laughs) I'd love to know, like, what what is the average dose that's taken to improve?